Good evening. Welcome to Father Record. Preparations for the 2018 elections are underway with voter registrations, voter awareness and the ongoing recruitment of polling officials. Yet a coalition of five political parties have continued to raise concerns about the electoral system and the electoral process, saying more needs to be done to deliver a free and fair elections in 2018. The parties are the National Federation Party, Sodalpa, Fiji United Freedom Party, Fiji Labour Party and the People's Democratic Party. I am joined to discuss these electoral issues <coughs> by Sodalpa MP, Sir Mr. Semesa Karavaki, and Jagath Karunaratne, the president of the Fiji United Freedom Party. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, let's start. What are your concerns? An, a similar election was done in 2014 and deemed by the inter international community through the multilateral observer group, uh, also short-named uh, short MOG, as broadly representative of the will of the Fijian voters, and that the conditions were in place for Fijians to exercise their right to vote freely. So, what's the problem with the uh, process now in 2018? Uh, then, then you start. I think, uh, you know, we have in place two reports. Reports by the previous Electoral Commission mm -hmm. itself, and the MOG report. Those two reports, they have highlighted issues that needs to be addressed before the 2018 elections. The main concerns of the political parties, as will be shared also by Jagat, the partnership that the political parties want to have with the Electoral Commission in bringing in the changes that need to be introduced. Uh, on the basis of those two reports. So partnership? Partnership. Partnership. Uh, the reason is this, because political parties, when you talk about political parties, you talk about agency for democracy. They're the agency for democracy. They are not there on their own. They are there because of the people who are members of the, those political parties. Right, so you mentioned partnership. The Electoral Commission has said they've actually reached out to you and called you twice to come in and offer a submission. So they've heard you out, haven't they? Well, that's one of the clarifications that uh, we want to make as well. This is the claim made by the Electoral Commission Chair in, on the show last, last time. He, he said that it is the Electoral Commission who invited us. Yes, is they actually called you twice. It is not quite right. We as political parties, five political parties, we came together and then we wrote a letter to the Electoral Commission asking for an audience. Right. It was initiated by the political parties to which they responded and then following that we had two meetings. Yeah. The first meeting we were simply told that the election commission will follow the law as is and there's nothing else they can do. That's right. That was the first meeting. That's what they've said that they told you. Exactly. And the second meeting that we had we were given 20 minutes to explain the content of our submission. So, if the Electoral Commission is claiming that they have invited us to participate, it is not entirely correct, because it is us as political parties who requested to have that partnership, to have a collaboration between us as the key stakeholders of uh, elections process, to be in there and then discuss together. So they said that they had got your written submission, and then they called you twice, and you said they gave you 20 minutes. They're saying that you have been given the full opportunity to present your submissions. Okay, to add to that, also the chair of the Electoral Commission mentioned in the last pro uh, for the record program that they have reviewed our submission and between the periods of February to April. In fact, our submission was made to them on the 18th of May. So, and if they are claiming that they have reviewed our entire submission between February to April, so that means our submissions are not considered, uh, they have not considered them because uh, it was submitted to them on the 18th. So these are the little uh, misinformation, so to speak, uh, was uh, mentioned in the last program. So again, coming back to the, the issue of us wanting to have a partnership with them, uh, as Mr. Katawaki was also saying, uh, we, as, we are the key stakeholders of, of the, the electoral process. We must be in there. But there should not be any sort of a hostile uh, feeling against each other. 
So what we have been saying, if you have read our yeah. submission, is clearly uh, says. And, and, and they, they, they haven't sort of uh, hostility. All they've said is they've looked at the submissions and they've made their decisions. And those decisions are based on, I mean, they said that they've gone thoroughly through it. Secondly, they've uh, uh, said that uh, your claims of irregularities in the 2014 elections, that you've failed to provide any evidence of the purported irregularities, and he told the Justice, Law and Human Rights Committee hearing that you, you failed to furnish any evidence to the previous electoral commission and then to this commission. So he said, we cannot drag this issue any further. Mr. Karamani? Uh, first of all, uh, Stead, I, I must, I must uh, declare that I am a member of the Justice, Law and Human Rights um, Standing Committee in Parliament. I, I, I will not be drawn into that one because, you know, I'll, I, I'll probably be compromising my position over no there. Good, yeah. But what I would like to say that the Electoral Commission have the mandate given to it by the Constitution to yes. ensure to ensure, Stan, that everything they do, they must respect the rights of the people to vote. They might, must respect the political parties. You know, they are part of the electoral machinery. Mm. And the environment they must create, it must be an environment that does not create bipartisan, you know, sectorial, and uh, egg, egg, um, division, as to speak. So you're saying that they're creating it because in their mind, you are creating that environment that's, uh, in their words, falsely designed to undermine the public's faith in the electoral pro pro process, which we are committed to strengthen and uphold. No, I, I don't agree with that, uh, uh, Stan. You know, it is their role is to bring everybody together. It is not the political parties wanting to knock on the door, knock on the door all the time. They are the electoral management body. They are the one to initiate things for the good of the nation. Because elections is the transferring of the mandate of the people you know, to a political party to govern. Right. And they are the one responsible for that. They must not... Uh, blaming the political parties. They create the environment to bring them in. They invite them to come in. Well, they said that they have invited you in well, on two occasions I'm going back after to looking at your written submissions. We're going back to that claim again, uh, Stanley, about uh, not providing evidence on allegations. If you again really look at the submission, this does not have any allegations whatsoever. Okay. So Hold that thought, Jagat. Yes. We'll go to the break and we'll be back. You're watching For the Record. We'll be right back. You're watching For the Record. We are with uh, Sodalpa MP, Mr. Semesa Karavaki, and uh, Jagath Karunaradne of the um, United, Fiji United Freedom Party. So before we went to the break, you were, we were talking about the um, evidence and allegations that the commission has looked at and dismissed, saying you do not have. Yes. So this is the same, same uh, claim the, the, it was made by the Electoral Commission, even in the Parliamentary Committee and, and also in this program. Uh, what I was saying is the submission, 122, 121 recommendations, it doesn't have any allegations whatsoever. So to dismiss our submission, claiming that we were unable to, we haven't provided them the evidence, is, is not right again. Because it doesn't have any allegations whatsoever. We are making the made sub, uh, recommendations based on those two, two reports. Uh, so you're saying that... The you did not put out that there were irregularities in the 2014 election? There's none in the submission. So, because this is the words, the Commission extended a final opportunity. You both have talked about them being partners and talking about it and looking at the bipartisan way to, to make this work. Because we want a good electoral system. So they said the Commission extended a final opportunity to all the five parties to submit any evidence of irregularities in the 2014 election, which we had more than enough time to compile and you did not, was never able to furnish them in time. So in their mind, that uh, while you say that they're not creating that environment, in their mind it is you that's creating that environment. All the allegations from 2014, these are the words of the Commission, lack merit and are falsely designed only to undermine the public's faith in the electoral process, 
which we are committed to strengthen and uphold. Mr. Karamaki. The, the political parties, the five political parties are not wanting to undermine the electoral process, the work of the electoral commission, right. and the work of the supervisor of election. Actually, they're wanting to be part of the process. So this is not politics, because that's the end uh, a statement that they've made, that all you're doing now is politics. You're playing politics with the process. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not that. See, instead of replying to the political parties, they took their reply to the Committee of Justice, uh, Justice, Law and Human Rights Committee in Parliament. Why didn't they, they, they call the five political parties to go and discuss their, their response to, you know, to, to their submission? You know, they, they should not be, be behaving or conducting themselves in that way because the political parties want to be part and parcel of the process. Because in doing so, the whole process will become transparent. Mm. A, a, and you will, you will discard any environment of suspiciousness, you know, to be suspicious of the, of the process. Everything will be transparent. At the end of the day, when the, everything is over, everybody accepts the result. The result. And that's, yeah. what, well, that's mm. Mm. in essence, what they've said. Mm. They've heard you. They've made their decision. And you're choosing not to accept those decisions. Look, one of the things they say, you know, you, you have alluded to that. They say that anything to do with the law, we have nothing to do with it. Yes. We just conduct the elections, elections according to the law. Within the law. Yeah, according to the law. And they say they will not be responsible for any change of the law. To accommodate the recommendations was given to them by the previous electoral commission and the MOG report. Some of those recommendations require the change, the amendment of the law. So right? can the electoral commission change the law? They, they are the electoral body. How can the but can they change the law? How can the government know then what law to change if they are not advised by the electoral commission? Because this is what they're saying. They are tasked to carry out free and fair elections, but within the current law. He has stated uh, publicly that the electoral commission will follow the law as it is and not what it should be, which means maintaining the status quo. Now, with that, the the responsibility and the duty of the Electoral Commission, as provided by the Constitution, to ensure, ensure free and fair elections. If the law, current law, is standing in the way in ensuring that, they must, it is their responsibility to take it to the Parliament or take it to the government to make those changes. So that is, the, their, this, is this is where uh, this thing has been going back and forth. They're right. claiming that we can't change the law. We are saying, no, no, it is, it is your duty to do, to do so. Can they change the law now with the elections just a year away? Now, these recommendations, 2014 Electoral Commission has made these recommendations. Because that's what, what they said. Uh, they cannot recommend these changes at this stage. They may look at this in the future, but not right now. Time is not on, on the side. They, they need consistency in the approach. The process has taken place. In other words, you've come late to the party on this issue. This, first of all, the it, it was the Electoral Commission 2014 annual report made recommendations, previous uh, commission, not the previous, but the, the mm. individuals who were in the previous one. So this has been there since 2014. Immediately after that, the emoji report came out. And the delay also was to do with the appointment of the new commissioners to the, the Electoral Commission. And it, it is their responsibility to go through their own report. Mm. The Electoral Commission report is their own report. It is not ours to go through those recommendations which was recommended by their own commission and then implement them in timely manner. What we did was we have taken these reports, these are not allegations again as Stanley, right, okay. we have taken these two reports and then went back to them, are you guys going to do anything about it? So, so let's, let's a good clarification, we are not making allegations, yes. what are you making are recommendations, yes. would that be correct? Yes. Now let's come back to your point about the changing of the law Mr. Tarabak. This is what the commission says. The electoral commission is not appointed to make any laws, nor are we authorized to amend or disregard any law. We can make rules of procedure that are consistent with existing laws. You don't agree with it? I, I agree, Stan, that the law is made by the government. That's right. It is their role to recommend to the government what law needs to be changed. 
to ensure that the mandate under the Constitution is complied with. That's their position, because if the outcome of the election is not going to be a free and fair election, then they are the ones that are answerable to it, because under the Constitution, they are mandated. Well, it is mandated to do well, that. Well, in a way, they've passed it on to your committee. No, no, it's, 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 it's not the committee stand that committee. makes the law. The committee does not make the law. Yeah, but they have passed it on to the committee to consider the and take it from the, there. The committee will not do anything to make any law out of that. They go to the government to recommend it to the government. Uh, they who, take who it needs to, the to go to the government, sorry? They take it to the minister responsible. Right, the standing committee or the electoral commission? No, no, the electoral commission. Right. The electoral commission. That is the pathway. They take it to the minister responsible. The minister responsible will take it to cabinet. And they will make the law and bring it to parliament. So you're saying they follow the wrong process here? I, I because they've, I, they've, they've passed it on to Parliament to consider these obviously nine recommendations, which they say they have no jurisdiction on. Obviously, Stan, they're following the wrong, the wrong pathway. Whether it is deliberate or not, I don't know. But it is a waste of time, the pathway that they're pursuing. The, 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 the Standing Committee will not make any law. Right. But, it but will can they only make recommendations? It, it can only make recommendations, but where it will go to, it will end up to the minister again. So you have a... So you're saying they could have shot around and bypassed around. the process. That's right. It must be a clear pathway. They know what to do. And follow that pathway, and then the outcome will come out. All right. Our time's up for this segment. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching For the Record. Now, before we went to the break, we were talking about the process that the Electoral Commission has undertaken uh, to look into the recommendations that were made by the Multilateral Observer Group, the MOG Report, and the previous Electoral Commission. Could the political parties have come a bit earlier over the last few years to look into this rather than waiting? Because that's one of the issues being raised. You waited till the, on the eve of the elections to raise this issue. What were you doing over the last three years since the 2014 elections, Chagat? First of all, uh, Stanley, there was no delay whatsoever from political parties' point of view. In fact, we never thought that we had to remind them to work, look into the recommendations already been made by uh, the two entities, mm. uh, MOG and the Electoral Commission itself. When there was no action by them, we felt that it is our duty to inquire as to see what's, what's going on with these recommendations. That is when we requested early in February to meet up with the Commission to ask these questions and it got delayed till the 18th of May. In between time, we compiled another submission which is uh, uh, the, the combination of these recommendations made by uh, these two entities. So there was no delay as such from our end. It was us reminding them, asking them, are you going to do your uh, responsibility and duty that you're supposed to be doing? Which they said that they've invited you to, to be part of and, um, and that you provided a submission to. But you're saying that's not enough, the time that they gave you. The submission was made and from there what we expected was, uh, what we expected was to be part of the process and then have an ongoing discussion and to agree or disagree on what are the recommendations that we can implement and what are the things that we can't implement. So th this was the partnership that we were seeking for, but it was, we felt that our submission, our recommendations were simply dismissed, uh, claiming the allegations and claiming the, uh, we, we got delayed in uh, providing the submission and all, all sorts of things like that. So this is where I was trying to say that we, we, want the, we don't want this hostile kind of situation between the Electoral Commission and the political parties because we are all in the same, uh, same group. We are the key stakeholders of this whole process. Mm -hmm. We want to be part of it, and at least this whole process to be seen as transparent as well as to be transparent in the end, so that we all agree what are the rules that we are going to play the game on. Mr. Karawaki, can they make changes now, or is it too late? Can they make changes in time? Of course, uh, Stan, if, if you look at the 2014, 2014 elections, the last law that was put into place was only about weeks before the actual election 
was going to take place. If there is a will, you know, to ensure that the process is done according to the to the bird's eye view of the international groups like the MOG mm. uh, groups that came in because they, they came in on the stand on the internal international standard. That's right. And what is contained in the report is actually to help Fiji to elevate its process to that international standard. And if Fiji does not uh, uh, comply with that or wants to take steps towards that stand. Yeah. Well, well, 38 recommendations from the MOG. Yes. 19 was actually actioned. Nine, they're saying they have no jurisdiction and they've rejected 10 recommendations. So they've looked into those reports, into those standards. And this same MOG did say that it produced the 2014 elections was credible and fair. So why can't we use the same process in 2018? For example, Stan, now, you see, that was a system that newly introduced in 2014. Mm. People were not familiar with it. Now, after the election in 2014, they have studied the, 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 the system properly, and now they are getting familiar with it. And they are raising up these issues. For, for example, there was one recommendation that was made by the Electoral Commission itself, the previous Electoral Commission, for a change in the law to allow all the ballot papers that were collected during the pre-poll period not to be brought over in envelopes, but to be brought over in the ballot boxes. See, because in the 2014, all those ballot papers that were collected during well, the that's people a, period. That's a process thing. That's not a law. No, no, it's the law. It's in the law. The recommendation was to change the law, the, 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 the law that, that, that controls that, that the, accommodates the that, and, and to put the word ballot box instead of envelopes. That, that's part of the law. So part of the law. Yes. So what are the other laws that need to be changed? That since we've been talking about laws that need to change, what are the particular laws that you feel that need to be changed quickly? See, there, there, there are also difficulties for political parties to be formed because there is a requirement for them to get the required numbers under the law, their supporters for their registration from all different parts of Fiji. You get that? Right. Mm. And, and imagine some of these political parties, their supporters are in the sugarcane belt. They are not in the eastern islands of Fiji. And then they are required, before they can, they can be registered, is for them to go and get supporters from where they don't have any support. But will this really ah. affect what you call a free and fair elections? I mean, are you just, you're trying to improve the process, or do you think this goes against the ability to have a free and fair elections? It gives them the rights. It That's gives right. them the rights. Because, look, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. the Electoral Commission has made a decision. I mean, your points, yeah. I take, take your points on board. It has received your recommendations. It's considered them. It's made its determination. When are you going to say, okay, right, we tried. We got it in good faith. We wanted to build this partnership. It's not there, but it's time for us to move on. It's time for us to prepare for the election and campaign on the issues that the people want to hear about. So are you going to continue to make this an issue, or will you start, when will you move on? Stan, th these are very important issues, very critical. See, when, when, I, when I talk about the, the ballot papers being brought over in the envelopes, this is very unsafe. Mm. Because anybody can discard those envelopes and get another envelope and put some, some, some more ballot papers in there, different from those that were actually casted at the police station. So you're not, uh, you're not confident of the security process in that ballot during the elections? O obviously not, uh, Stan. The process itself must ensure safety in itself before you can rely on, on that kind of security ele elements. You, you, you know, it's, it's something that must be properly traced, must be easy to trace. Okay, so will you accept, having all your points been made, the Commission has looked at it, they are the governing authority of the 2018 elections, 
Will you keep on going what some will think, oh, look, the decision's been made. You're not going to change their mind now. Will you accept that it's now time to move on to fight the next elections, or will you continue to raise these issues, Chaka? We will definitely need to uh, continue to raise these issues, uh, Sandy, because it's, it's, again, the credibility and the fairness on the elections on the voters as well. It is not just the political parties. Political parties are representing these people, and everybody is waiting to see whether it is worth uh, spending time and having hopes in the election. It's, it should not be just a hope. It has to be, for people need to be comfortable, people need to feel that this is free and fair, and the political parties also need to have the same feeling, and we need to have that cooperation and collaboration with the Electoral Commission and the supervisor of election to get it to that stage. And right. this must continue until that we reach that level. That level, all right. You're watching for the record. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching for the record. Now, we've stated that the Commission has made their decisions on this. They've uh, accepted 19, rejected 10, given 9 to the Standing Committee to look at and decide what they will do with it. Uh, you still feel that that's not the right process? So my question is, will you still stand in the elections even without these changes being made? That's a, a very critical issue to consider. You know, come to a point when you want to be a part of a process, when it's obvious that the process is not credible, is not free and fair, you wouldn't want to be that kind of process, you know, to be part of that kind of process. Well, That's how can it not, not be free and fair when the MOG itself said in 2014 that it was credible and generally re broadly represented the will of the Fijian people? So if it was good in 2014, why can't it be, bad, why can't it be good in 2018? You see, MOG, uh, uh, Stan, they, they observe the general uh, you know, process. Right. They, they don't really see the integral and detailed part of any election. They don't look at it. That they just see the people are turning out in numbers. They see they are given their ballot papers and they and they uh, have cast their vote. Well, they see that it's working. Yeah. They don't see the the integral part. You know, that's that's what the political parties are coming up with now. Mm. You know, taking it up to the electoral commission. Can you look at this, please? Because, you know, for, 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 for an example, Stan, for, for an example, Stan, the lady that, that stood in, in, in Ra, that during the counting was given 6,000 votes. Uh, uh, Votokola, I think. In Votokola, yes, in, in Votokola. Um, and then, she, she, she was the leading candidate of Sidalpa at the time. And then all her votes disappeared. How did that happen? has not been explained in fully up to now. And, and, and that poor lady did not have a clear pathway, you know, to be able to articulate her grounds of appeal because... Really? Surely she would, she would have been able to check in the process that's there and it was clarified that her numbers had been... This happens in elections anywhere. Sometimes you, numbers go in the wrong places. It's, and it's, 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 it's not that simple because the law requires you to come up with articulated grounds of, you know, of challenge. And you need to, to, to know that, to learn that from the process. If the process is not clear and you do not understand what was going on, how would you, you make up your grounds of, of challenge? Okay, but now you know what's going on. And that's why the political parties are asking. So, Jagath, you mm. think this, the elections will still be able to be called free and fair in 2018? The, the, the issue here again, as Mr. Karawaki was saying, it's the process itself. It's the process itself. And, and the MOG and the entities who are observing it are not really looking at the details of how it is, it is done. Put it in, in a very simple way, Stanley. In terms of processes, all we are asking as political parties is to see this is where the, the process starts, this is where the process ends. Can we have our eyes in it? Okay. And can we understand each process? That's so, all we're we asking. The commission has made its decision, 
and are you ready, are you prepared to move on now and fight the elections? I mean, you said that this government's not doing a good job, the people are not happy. So are you prepared now to stand on those grounds, go ahead and let the people decide it's time whether we continue with this government or to make a change? I mean, generally needs to let the people decide, shouldn't we? It's, it's, it's really not simple as that, uh, Stan, because we want the will of the people to be translated into actual result. That's, that's what the political party yes. wants. If the process is not able, Stan, to do that, well, it looks like now the proof is underway and you are mudding the waters, some would argue. Trying to make it look, give yourselves, you know, if you would win, I'm sure you'd say, oh, it was a nice process. If you'd lose, like generally many political parties, you look for excuses or look for someone to blame on these issues. So can we, are we said 2014 was a good start, there's been changes made, are, they, are we ready to fight the elections or are we not? We are ready, uh, Stan on the basis that the Electoral Commission comes forward and engage with the political parties. Engage with the political parties in putting the final preparation, you know, the fi final consultation, and, so, and lay so, out so the process so, in a very so, transparent way. So to move way. on, you think there's still room for that? Yeah, there's still room for that. We yeah. There's room to be able to sit down with them again and chat. Absolutely, makes Stan. Everybody we, happy. We, we still have the IT process. And in a partnership. In a partnership. In a partnership. In a partnership. No hostility. No, no hostility. politics. Yes. yes. Moving forward for making the system better. Yeah, that's what we want, want okay. Fiji to. You know. So, one yeah. of the key issues you raised was about the supervisor of elections. I saw in one of your recommendations. You don't want him. You want him to uh, be removed. Well, why, why is that? Stan, if, if, if you want our point of view on that. Yeah. There hasn't been an, any time in the electoral uh, management body in, in Fiji where a supervisor of election had actually challenged yeah. we actually and yeah. the, direction, the directives given by the Electoral Commission. Which None ever any time in the history of elections in Fiji. That issue is now before the court. The uh, issue is now before the, before the court, conveniently taken up to the Fiji Court of Appeal. To the Supreme uh, Court now. Uh, to the Supreme Court now, now yes. No. The, that's over. That's changed now with this amendment in February, the in Parliament where it says clearly that the supervisor of elections takes instructions for the commission, and he becomes the secretary of the commission. And this, according to the commission, this was actually a recommendation in the MOG report that there should be an administrative link between the two. So why can't he continue uh, in this process despite what has happened in 2014? You, you see, that will again compromise the functions of the, of, of the supervisor of election. Okay, I've you, been asked to go to the break. Can we continue with the oh, discussion right. after the Thank break? You. Okay, You're watching for the record. <music> Welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about the supervisor of elections, that uh, the amendment in Parliament that he now takes his instructions from the Commission. He had actually challenged that uh, in 2014. So he becomes the secretary of the commission, which uh, they say is a re actual recommendation that was made in the MOG report, that there should be this link between the supervisor of elections and the electoral commission. And he now takes his instructions from the electoral commission. Isn't that the way forward? Well, the recommendation 11 uh, by the MOG clearly says that the relationship between the surprise of elections and the Electoral Commission should be clear and there should be demarcation. So this is kind of misinterpreted uh, when uh, the Electoral Commission is saying they have Ill implemented the recommendation. The recommendation doesn't talk about making the surprise of election the secretary to the Commission. That clearly is, is, is a conflict. It is, it is not the recommendation by MOG in the first place. Secondly, this is, there is an enforcer and there is a regulator. So these yeah. are two entities that need to work. Like if you look at the simple principles of separation of powers, you need to look at these entities sep working separately. They can work in separately, but they can also work together, can't they? In complementing. So that's what they're saying here, that as the secretary, he gets to understand the thinking of the Electoral Commission, and the Electoral Commission can clearly convey their ideas to the supervisor of elections. Mr. Not necessary to be like that. 
That's very dangerous then. See, the Electoral Commission and the Supervisor of Election, they have their constitutional offices, independent of each other. Italy. Independent of each other. And the Electoral They're both Commission... two different entities. Two different entities. The Electoral Commission has the, 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 the functions and the rights to direct the Supervisor of Election. Because in the, under the Constitution, the Electoral Commission is the one that is responsible for all the electoral process. It is the supervisor of election that has the responsibility to carry out the work. See, a, a, and you can make him to become a secretary of this. Well, he's been made the secretary. Well, th 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 that needs, you know, to, to, be, to, to be looked at, whether he's going to be taken up to the court for a challenge, for the unconstitutionality of, of that appointment. Because, for example, to understand, if the electoral commission tells the supervisor of election, you do this, and the supervisor of election knows that it is unlawful under the, the law, whether it is, is the constitution or the electoral laws, he should be able to stand and say, no, I will not do it because it's unlawful. That gives him the right because of it, in his independence. To make him a secretary, it removes that, that independence. But you've previously stated that he is bound by the instructions of the electoral commission. Yes, to be lawful, lawful direction. Mm. The directions must be lawful directions. If he sees that it is unlawful, he is responsible to tell the electoral commission, no, that is, un that is, that is not lawful. So you don't think that the process is okay there? No, it's not okay. It's not okay for him to be the secretary because that removes his independence. All right. According to the multilateral observer group from the last year's report, and we have 90 seconds left, that the election office and election workers in the last elections were competent, professional, and committed in performing their duties under challenging circumstances. And despite everything, the conditions were in place for Fijians to exercise their right to vote freely. And while the MOG notes areas for improvement of Fiji's electoral process, it deems that it was a credible election. You've got 30 seconds each. Your final comments on what should be done now and how we can move forward. Chagat. I still think that we need to engage with each other. Uh, which should not be a political uh, blame game pointing at each other. Yeah. We should still have time to engage with each other and then come to some sort of a uh, mutual understanding and agreement on how the process are going to be. That and, is that, and that can happen? That can still happen. Okay. Mr. Karavati? They are in, in, integr integral and, and, uh, and uh, part of the, of the process that the, the MOG did not observe. And it is now time you know, for the Electoral Commission to come together with the political parties. And you think you can still parties. make it better? You yeah, make it better. All right. That was a great discussion, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on For the Record. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That was the show for the evening. We hope you enjoyed it, and uh, you'll join us again next Sunday. From me and the team, good night. Mm -hmm.